بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومما رزقناهم ينفقون means as long as Allah has given to you you spend That's why a lot of us we beat our heads praying and we fasting and we doing everything and you want to know why you're not getting because you're too cheap when you have it, you must use it. Make intention money for Allah in the part of Allah. And Allah will put barakat in your money so your money could be used in the part of Allah. Allah, 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 ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمه وهيئ لنا من امرنا رشدا اللهم رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اما بعد الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for once more blessing us to be here today to perform the salatul jumu'ah the friday congregational prayer and to listen to the khutbah or the sermon inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad again sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in and upon his family members and companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy upon each and every one of us to shower his hidayah his guidance upon us to shower his forgiveness upon us and to shower his acceptance upon us I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once more to accept our fast in this month of Ramadan, to accept our charity, to accept our prayer, to accept all our amal and our deeds and good deeds in this holy and blessed month of Ramadan, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the life the health and the strength and the opportunity to live for many, many, many more years, to witness many more holy months of Ramadan, this blessed and holy month, inshallah. I remind you and I remind myself, brothers and sisters, that we are vaif, we are weak, we know nothing, and it is only by the mercy and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to say or do anything. So I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, 
the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the sermon here today. I once more put my trust, put my tawakkal in Allah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and may He protect us once more, inshallah. I know this sounds very long and drawn out, but it is very important that we understand that we are nothing and we know nothing. And it is only by the guidance of Allah, it is only by His mercy. A lot of us sometimes think that we will enter paradise because of the fast that we have fasted, because of the prayer that we have prayed, because of the charity that we have given. That is our duty. We owe that. We need to pray. We need to give charity. We need to fast. We need to perform pilgrimage. But our acceptance into paradise is only by the mercy of God Almighty. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, That he forgives whomsoever he wishes. He forgives whomsoever he wishes. He, he is the one who can forgive and who can punish. It is his choice on the day of judgment, what he, God Almighty, wants to do. Our duty is to act, to do what we have to do. So I don't want us to sit back and think, well, Ramadan has come and we have prayed and we have fasted and I'm surely going to paradise. We need to have that hope. But I don't want you to think it's what we do that takes us to paradise. We must believe we are going to paradise. But we must also believe that it is by Allah's, it's by God's mercy that we will be accepted into paradise. And I know that's a very Christian perspective also. That it is by the mercy of God. Anyhow, I know I'll be using a lot of Islamic terminology at this time. So I want to, of course, welcome the sheriff himself. You know, when the sheriff is in town, things make a lot of difference. <laughs> so the sheriff and the other deputies and the chief of staff, Lisa, and everyone else. I see we have Officer Nizar Hamza here in his uniform as usual today in the masjid, mashallah, and the other deputies. Pleasure to have you. And as Brother Azad said, we will hear from the sheriff after the, the, the sermon and the prayer in the next uh, 25 minutes or so, inshallah. So bear with me if I use some terminology that you don't understand. Nizar will have to explain to you. Officer Nizar today, brother Nizar, later on. But Allah, when we use the word Allah, we refer to the God Almighty. Just for the benefit of each and every one of us. Allah is not the name of a God. Allah means the none like him. There is no word, there is nothing that we can compare to give equality to the word Allah. So it means the none like him. But we just say Allah. God is the only closest thing in English that we can try to use so people could understand what we're talking about. So we don't start doing the wrong things. But you know, before I continue the khutbah, today and going to the second sermon, I have to say, share something, brother Zad. When I listen to this boy, this student, what's his name? Called the Adhan Arafat. Not Arafat from Palestine. Huh? All right. Yasser Arafat? No. I want to know if he came back. This is Sheikh Arafat. <laughs> when he called the Adhan, a little while ago, I had to share that with you. And I was sitting here, and my heart, really, my heart, I felt like I'm crying in my heart. It was so beautiful. I, you know, I got goosebumps when I heard him call that Adhan. So wonderful, so beautiful, so motivating, so spiritual. You know, it makes you feel to pray when you hear an Adhan like that. You know, some places I go in America, <laughs> when I hear some people call Adhan, I also feel the crying. But that's not crying out of happiness, that's crying out of sadness. I'm like, oh Allah, 
You mean we don't have nobody better to call the Adhan? Not only it's pronounced wrong, it's out of tune, wrong pronunciation, and I'm like, what? Oh, you know, sometimes I under, even, you know, I know the hadith says that when the Adhan, the call of prayer is called, the devil runs. But I think even when the devil hears an Adhan like that, he's going to run further. Even him is going to worry what's going on here now. This is a serious matter. It's really nothing to laugh about. It's something to cry. The Hazrat Bilal, radiallahu ta'ala. Do you know when you go to Makkah and Medina, and you hear the adhan, even before you start a prayer, you feel like you're praying. Isn't that so? You sit here in Florida, and you hear the adhan, so beautiful for Makkah and Medina on your phones, and you're like, Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu selected a man called Bilal, his companion. There were so many Arabs, rich Arabs, good-looking Arabs, nice Arabs. He didn't put them to call the Adhan. He put someone who could have called the Adhan beautiful. And when that man Bilal, radiallahu ta'ala, who used to call the Adhan, people would cry. When they hear the adhan, they would rush to the masjid. And they didn't have the acoustic system that we have today. The microphone system, the treble and the bass and the middle and all the nine yards on the equalizer. But yet when he called the adhan, people were motivated to pray. So I want to share this with myself and you, my brothers and sisters. Those of us who call the adhan, try to call it correctly and beautifully. It's something of calling people, not chasing people. All right? Please remember that. I'm not giving a khutbah on adhan. I didn't intend to. But when I heard him call adhan, Allahu Akbar, I got to justify it with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the adhan is such a beautiful thing that the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, if people knew the virtues, if people knew the blessings and the bounties in calling the adhan, the call to prayer, people will rush and fight to do it. It's a promised position in Jannah, in paradise. I, I, you know, I travel all over the United States, man, and I hear some people call it. It's like, oh, Allah, what are they calling? Some that wanna, is that, what language are they calling this thing in? So let's correct that. I, I, I told Brother Fahad we got to do a, 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 a Muslim comedy on the Adhan calling on Al Hikmah TV and send it worldwide and see the different styles of people butcher the Adhan. So it will be a lesson so people can learn it. But I had to share it today because this boy, this student, called it so beautiful, Allahu Akbar. And you've got to give credit where credit is due. So I've got to use that opportunity to remind myself and remind you those of us who call it, call it nicely. You want to call it, learn to call it. And you go other places, well, you can't stop people from calling it in their own mosque. But you know, we get this message out in Al Hikmah TV. It's broadcasted worldwide, alhamdulillah. It gets out there, alhamdulillah. Anyhow, in the first khutbah, my brothers and sisters, last week we spoke about etikaf, seclusion, and forgiveness. And you know, we have a few brothers, 15 plus brothers, who are staying and sleeping and doing prayer all day all night here that's one law and I don't want to get into that back we spoke about that last week we try to speak about a week in advance inshallah and then we spoke about the forgiveness in this month of Ramadan the forgiveness of Allah the forgiveness of God Almighty the mercy of God in this month the forgiveness of God in this month the emancipation from the fire of hell in this holy month we already went through all of that so in the second khutbah, in the second khutbah, inshallah, I want to take a different perspective. A little. I know we touched on Laylatul Qad over the past few nights. Last week we touched on Laylatul Qad, the night of power. So I really don't want to get back into that because tonight is the, 20th, tonight is the 24th night of the month. Today is the 24th day of fasting. We go by the lunar calendar where the night comes before because the world was first in darkness and then we got light. So we first calculate like that. 
And um, based on that, inshallah, tomorrow night will be the 25th night, another odd night to seek the night of power. Laylatul Qad, Monday night, the 27th night, an odd night to seek the blessings on this holy night of power. Wednesday night, the 29th night. And as we have been explaining over the past few weeks, Eid al Fitr is expected and is expected 99.9% .9 to be next week Friday, inshallah. So today is the more or less the last Friday in the holy month of Ramadan. The last Friday, inshallah. The moon is expected to be born next week, Wednesday, on the 15th. So it will be visible on the evening of the 16th, which makes that night, Thursday next week, Thursday night, the first night of the, the month of Shawwal, the Islamic month of Shawwal. And you know how the Jews got their month and, and Rosh Hashanah, etc. We also got our lunar calendar and the Islamic months of Ramadan and Shaban and Shawwal. So next week, Friday, will begin the first day of the month after Ramadan, which means it will be the day of Eid al-Fitr, and today is the last day of the holy month of Ramadan. In some countries, they consider, I mean, the last Juma, the last big Juma. In some countries, they consider today as Juma al wida the farewell Juma of the month of Ramadan, the last Juma. Because Juma, Friday is our holy day. And I'm trying to pitch a few things for our non-Muslim guests, the sheriff and his team here today. Friday is our holy day, our Sabbath day. As Saturday is the Sabbath day for the Jews, and Sunday the Sabbath day for the Christians, Friday is our Sabbath, our Juma, our holy day. And this is the last Juma of Friday in this month of Ramadan. So it's a very auspicious day. Tonight also, right here at Darul Uloom, we should be having hundreds, if not seven, eight hundred to a thousand people, inshallah, because we'll be completing the recitation of the Quran for the whole month. Our Hufas have been reciting chapters of the Quran. And tonight we will be completing that, inshallah, and we'll be praying and making dua, asking God Almighty for his mercy, for his forgiveness, for his acceptance, for his blessings in us reading, reciting, participating, and listening to the entire Holy Quran. So everybody again, tonight, with Isha Salah, tell your friends, tell your relatives, it's going to be a grand night tonight, inshallah. In the second khutbah, my brothers and sisters, I wanted to talk a little more about Laylatul Qad, but because I went on to the Adhan, because you know, as the brother called the Adhan, I, I could not resist. My heart was like, Allahu Akbar, this is so beautiful. So in the second khutbah, inshallah, I want to remind myself and remind you a little bit, and it, an issue, I don't want to say a topic, but an issue that is important to us in this month of Ramadan and out of the month of Ramadan now that we are coming to the end of Ramadan so it's just a little issue of our human nature how we should act you know we are praying we're fasting we're, we're going to perform pilgrimage we're doing all these things but what else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, expect from us? Now that Ramadan is coming to an end, night prayer, fasting, all these gatherings and all these things will be coming to an end. What is expected from us? Now and all the time, inshallah. In the second khutbah, we'll touch about that, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah paradise without reckoning, insha'Allah. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil al. Al Hikmat Services, serving the Muslim community and non Muslim community. Dawah and interfaith activities, distribution of Quran and Islamic publications, sponsoring students to study Islam. Al Hikmat Da'i. Dawa and Interfaith Institute. Also, Friday sermons by Sheikh Shafaid are live on alhikmatv.com from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. 
Download our free Al Hikma TV app on your mobile devices. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Feel free to donate to Al Hikmat Dawa services online with a credit card or PayPal at alhikmat.com. For more details, contact Al Hikmat office at 1 800 804 0267 or our local number 954 986 0158 and visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi na'hmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ghafiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina ma yahdihillahu falamudhillala wa man yudhillhu falahadiyala wa nashhadu wa la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Once more we thank Allah. We thank God Almighty, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Juma, the Friday congregational prayer, to listen to the khutbah, to listen to the sermon. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to shower His peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and his companions. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help to continue. To continue with this khutbah and the ability and the permission to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah, inshallah. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Before we get into this topic I wanted to share with you, I need to share something a little before that so we don't get out of time and we got to conclude, inshallah. Next week, Friday, being Eid al it is important that we prepare for that. All right? I don't want to tell you it next week, Friday, and then it's going to be too late. You know, and we know, and we hear this every year, that on the day of Eid, the celebration, the Prophet wasallam taught us that we should dress the best, or dressed in our best that we have. I'm not telling you to go down the road and rent some clothing to come here and put on. I'm not telling you go into expense. You know, some people go to rent their tuxedo and their suit to create an impression to people. You don't need to create that impression to God. So don't put yourself in expense to rent a suit. You know what I mean? You know, they got shops that rent clothes. Brothers, do you rent your suit? Okay, all right. It'll be very expensive. Every week you come with a suit. So you couldn't rent that every week anyhow. So I'm not telling you you need to go down to the mall and rent some clothing to come next week for the prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, dress in your best. So how you would dress with the best that you have home, your best, best clothing that you would put on to go to White House or go to the wherever on your wedding day, whatever it may be. You dress in your best. That's a strong sunnah, the Prophet, peace be upon him. Look nice, smell nice, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, that Allah, God Almighty, has ordained this day of Eid al fit for us. In the days of ignorance, people used to celebrate and commemorate and had their days of ignorance. And you know, if you go back into the primitive days, people have a lot of primitive, uncivilized ways of celebrating. They celebrate with nakedness. And I don't want to even talk about carnival because I come from a country that is well known for carnival, Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm not promoting carnival. And this is broadcasted on Trinidad. This khutbah is broadcasted on Trinidad National Television. 
So I also want to tell you, a lot of the carnival, that women, I wouldn't say dress half naked, that women don't dress. You can't say dress because they don't have clothes on. So that's not dressing, that's undressing. In Brazil and Trinidad and many countries, country I come from, Carnival is a big celebration. You go back to the primitive, uncivilized days. That was the dress and the style of celebration. We don't celebrate like that. So the prophet, peace be upon him, says, God has ordained the Eid next week, Friday. Eid al Adha, Eid al Fit, the two Eids, the Eid on the time of the Abrahamic sacrifice, and the Eid of Ramadan. Dress in your best. So I don't want the sisters come in mini and shorts and without hijab, eh? Brothers. And I don't want the brothers come with pajama and lungi as though you're going to sleep. You dress in your best because the prophet, peace be upon him, said that. I see some people come to pray sometime. I, I want to know if they forgot where they're going or their wife chased them out and they came here to sleep. The oldest clothing, brother Nizar. On the prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty says, when you pray, you stand in your best apparels, your best uniform. You pray with devotion. You dress nice. You look nice. You smell nice for God. He wants to see how you appreciate him. Because we do that for human beings. To th when we appreciate human beings. And better than any human being is God Almighty. So when we pray, we must have that spirituality with us. The hearts must be spiritual. But I'm telling you that for next week week from today. From now, you spend your time, prepare for Eid, get into your celebration mode. It's very important. This, is, this has been designed in Islam, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, has taught us that. It's, so it shows that we appreciate what God has given to us. Allah has created this celebration for us. It's not a man-made celebration. So we do it the way he said to do it. That's point number one. Point number two, those of us who have forgotten to give our sadqatul fitr, or what is called zakatul fit, it's a charity that you've got to give before the day of the celebration. You see how important it is? As Muslims, before you celebrate next week, you are supposed to give the poor so they can also celebrate. When you go to pilgrimage and you perform pilgrimage, you've got to share the meat from the sacrificed animal for the poor. The third pillar of Islam, 2.5% from your savings for the poor. So as Muslims, we don't just celebrate without remembering the poor and the needy. That's important. You don't celebrate. If you look at every celebration, without exception, in Islam, when you celebrate and you enjoy, you must incorporate the poor and the needy. That's very important. Oh, yes. Mr. Sheriff, do you know when you're getting married? In Islam, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, in your marriage party, if you only invite the rich and you leave out the poor, your wedding is not blessed. Allahu Akbar. Oh. See? When you have a wedding party, or a walima, and you only invite the rich and you don't invite the poor, that nikah, walima, is not blessed. Has no barakat. Eid, you got to share with the poor. When you, when, you have a, when you get married and you have a baby, what do you celebrate? Akika. You, you, you have a feast. And when you have the feast, you got to share the meat from that animal for the poor. It's a condition. So you don't celebrate marriage, you don't celebrate birth, you don't celebrate Eid, you don't celebrate Eid al Adha without remembering the poor. See how Islam is deep. So I don't want you guys to go with this impression that Ramadan, why do I say this, my brothers and sisters? This is the month of Ramadan. We're praying. We're fasting. We're going to celebrate. But we cannot forget the poor. Don't be selfish and only remember yourself. Don't be selfish and only remember yourself. And I want to quote a little hadith here. A very, very, very strong hadith. And then we'll conclude with a verse from the Quran. And this hadith is about People who pray, people who fast. Right, Brother Nassim? This is a very, very important hadith, Brother, uh, Brother Nassim is a man who spent some time in Arabia and Pakistan and the world. So I know he has seen the whole operation. 
A lot of us today, because we pray and we fast we, and we perform hajj, we think we are it. We are a hero. Well, I am a hero. Sometimes in the eyes of Allah, you could be zero. Not really a hero. Listen to what Allah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says in that hadith. And I want to connect this hadith to Ramadan. Because a lot of us, I don't want the month of Ramadan to go. I don't want to dampen your spirit neither. Yes, whatever we have done, God Almighty has promised that you will be blessed. You will be rewarded. And he has granted that. La tabdila li kalimatillah. Allah does not go back on his words. What he says is power and authority. So if he says that you will be blessed for fasting, you will be blessed. So don't think I'm not talking about that. That is a done. Listen to this hadith and saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him. What I want to say, it's because of the fact that I touched on the topic of charity next week before Eid. You've got to give it from now. You don't pray Eid without giving that sagatul fit. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, if you give this zakat or fit, which is a man in his house, if he has 10 people in his homes, in his home, well, I say homes because, you know, some men have a couple of homes, but anyhow, you guys didn't get that, right? <laughs> homes or home, you know, in Islam, Allah uses the word wives. That's just the way the Quran goes, so we've got to speak in that language. He got to give for his wife and his children and everybody in his home, the servants, the maids, whatever. He got 10 people in his home, he got to give $9 per person. That's $90 he must give away now, today, but before the celebration next week to the poor and the needy so they could celebrate. Some people put it here in Daralulum in the box so we could give it to them. That's the law. The law is a father in a home, the head of the home must give for everybody in the home. That's the law. Now, my wife and children, if you're working and you got your own job, and if you don't have a job but you got the money, job is not necessary to have money. Always remember that. It's not necessary to have a job to have money. Brother Azad does not have a job, but he has money. Look, he's here. He doesn't have a job. He just married a wealthy woman. He was smart. So he gets money. He gets money and honey. Ah, stuck <laughs> forever. Anyhow, so my sons and daughters, if you don't have a job, but you have your savings and you have the money, you need to give that $9 for your own blessings that God you have given to me and I give out of what you have given to me. If the father wants, he give for the whole household, mashallah, double blessings. But whoever is working and has his own, he should give. So he or she will get their own blessings. Because a lot of people go away with the old perspective. You see, we read a lot of languages and we understand that the head of the home must give for everybody in the home. But you see, th those were the days when the head of the home alone worked. Those were the days when the head of the home alone earned. Nowadays, Everybody is ahead in the home. Husband is ahead, wife is ahead. And all the children got heads. And nobody is the head of the home. Everybody are leaders of the home. And that's why you have so much fighting and problems and you've got to give the broad sheriff call all the time. Wife beating husband, children beating parents, this beating that. Because everybody is the head of the home. Because we have what? Money. So when it comes to giving, use your money. Don't only use your money for talk and for power and for strength. When it comes to giving in the part of God, use the money. Don't use the money to quarrel. Use the money to give in the part of Allah. I need to share that, and I wanted to bring this hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. How important it is for us to understand this link, this human bond, and what, God, what the Prophet, peace be upon him, says about us praying, fasting, performing pilgrimage, but not considering other people. Hear what the Prophet, peace be upon him, says. And I need to read this line by line. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported, the companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He says, As-Sakhi, Qareeb min Allah, a generous person, 
A generous person is close to God Almighty. All right? A sakhi, a generous person, kareeb min al jannah. A generous person is close to paradise. A sakhi, a generous person, kareeb min al nas, is close to people. What does that mean? People love a generous person. And a generous person loves people. So people love him. For a man to be generous, he got to love people. So he gives. And people loves him back. And when I say generous, generous does not only mean money. Eh? Generous means kind, loving. You could give charity with a smile. Even a smile is charity. Be nice to people. You got to park in an area. You could move and let somebody else park. Kindness. Kindness. You know, in Surah Al-Ma'un, وَيَمْنَعُونَ al الْمَعُونَ The Mufassirin and commentators says Ma'un means helping neighborly deeds. Your neighbor wants something, a hammer or a screwdriver borrow, just to lend that is goodness and kindness. So generosity does not only mean money. All right. It means everything in your workplace, in your home, in your neighborhood. You know, sometimes you're traveling and you sit next to someone in an aircraft. You want to know if that person is dead. The person doesn't even smile, the person doesn't talk, the person doesn't say anything. I'm like, oh Allah, where did these people learn human connection relationship? Business people, managers, professionals, they don't even know to talk to people next to them. Generous, just a smile is generosity. Just a smile. So the prophet says generosity in general, whether it's money to a smile. A person, a sakhi. A person who is generous, kind, loving, and charitable, Qareeb min al nas is close to people. People will be close to him. And hear what he says about far. He says, A saqi ba'id min al nar. A generous person is far from hell. Subhanallah. And I'm coming to a very strong part of this hadith in the end. And that's why I wanted to connect that to us and our praying and fasting in this month of Ramadan before we conclude, inshallah. Then he went on to say, Wal Bakhil, a miser. You know, whenever I hear the word miser, you know, English is a very interesting language. Eh? English is a language that you put together foreign languages, Latin and Greek, and this and that and the other. But when I look at the word miser, M I S E R, and you take the word able and you join it to miser, what do you get? Miser able? What do you get? Miserable. Oh my gosh. Misers are very miserable people. Believe me. People who are stingy and mingy. They look rich. Nice car, nice house, nice job. But they're very miserable. That's why they're not loving. That's why they're not kind. That's why they're not charitable. That's why they're not generous. Because they feel everybody is miserable like them. So they don't want to give nobody nothing. They, want to be loving to, they don't want to be loving to nobody else. Because they're not loving, they're not kind, they're not giving, so they can't connect. You know, it's like internet. How does internet work by? Your phone must be able to go to connect. you got a car. If you want to go Bluetooth, if your phone cannot go on Bluetooth, your car could be the Mercedes Lexus, it won't connect. And if your phone has all the mechanism and you're driving a car that has no connection, it won't connect. So you need that connection. If we don't have it, how could you connect it? So we're miserable. When you're a miser, in Arabic, the person is called a bakhil. A person who is a miser in their homes, in their jobs, and alone, they're miserable. Sometimes you could look at them in their face and know they're miserable. I ain't going to tell you that secret. I studied that a little bit, though. Facial impression. A sure police officer studied it a little bit. You could look at a guy and know if he's a criminal sometimes, right? Even though the judge got to make the decision, you could watch his smile, watch his eyes, watch the way he... And you say, uh-huh, something suspicious, sir. Just the facial impression changes from white to red or from black to blue. And you figure something is going on. So, the Hadith says, al bakhil a miser, a stingy person, buried min Allah, is far from Allah, far from God Almighty. God keeps him away far. 
Ba'id min al jannah. A stingy person, a miser, is far from paradise. Ba'id min al nas and is also far from people. You see what I was telling you about a little while ago? People, you know, there are some people when you know they're stingy, they're misers. When they come into your gathering, you feel a weight. You feel a problem. When they leave, you feel like you could fly. They're heavy. In some places, you call the word heavy. You're uncomfortable. Discomfort. Because people don't feel that comfort with around them. Ba'id men are nas. They are far from people. People, hi, hello, how are you doing? Bye, good riddance. You don't want them around. Because other people are like... Come on, I missed you. When you come, my heart blooms and gloom, and I feel happy. You can see the smile in some people's face. When God puts that connection and love in your heart, that generosity, when Allah tells his angel Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, announce in paradise to all the angels that God loves that person. The angel goes and tells everybody else, God loves that person, and everybody loves that person. That's the connection. And then people connect. All right? Uh, if I was a politician, I'll tell them, just let God love you and people will vote for you. <laughs> I, I, I see our sister Ghazala Salam here. She's the president uh, of the, 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 the Muslim American Democratic Caucus. So I had to recognize her, you know. And God loves you, people will love you. If politicians would learn that secret, people would love them. You don't have to ask for vote, man. It comes. Anyhow. That's a political pitch. Forget about that. Hadith says, A bakhil, a stingy person, a miser, qareeb min nad is very close to the hellfire. You see? The generous person is close to paradise. The bakhil, as the Arabic says, the miser is close to hell. See how God puts it? Far from God, close to hell. And here the last part of this hadith. This is, this is the damaging part of it. So brother, brother, Erfan, you'll have to tell some of the brothers in Ithaca. I'll do a little bayan you and brother Abdul Salam, etc. tonight to the guys who sleep in here. You have the whole night to talk to them. I only got half an hour to talk here. The last part of this hadith and saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, this is deep, this is deep. He says, brother Nasim Sahib, he says, Wala jahil. And for the regular, ordinary, humble, ignorant person, and they use the word regular, ordinary, meaning not that sophisticated hafiz and scholar and person who thinks they knows it all. He says that regular. And if you want to really go in the word, this word, when he uses the word jahil, he means a very humble, simple person who's not with all of that up there. Wala jahilun sakhiyun. He says that regular, humble, ignorant person, you want to make it that way, he's just there. That person who is generous, a regular, ordinary jahil, ordinary, humble, ignorant person, no sophisticated doctor, engineer, lawyer, Islamic scholar, and sheikh, and imam, and waliullah, and all the brothers in itikaf, and leading namaz, and calling adhan. The humble person who knows nothing, that's what he's trying to say. I don't want you to think he means jahil stupid. He means an ordinary person. Wala jahilun sahiyun. A habbu ilallah. The person who is humble, simple, but is generous, is most beloved by God Almighty. Most loving by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A habbu ilallah. In the eyes of Allah, that person is more dear to Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal min abid bakhil. Allahu Akbar. This is, this is hard. Brother Niza, you know, you speak Arabic, right? You know what Allah is saying here? The Prophet Sussam, he says a humble, ordinary, you know people say, he's an ordinary guy, man. He ain't up there. He's just there. The Prophet, peace be upon him, say that guy who is just ordinary and simple, but he's generous and he's kind. He is dearer to God. God Almighty loves him more than that person who is praying all day, praying all night, fasting all Ramadan, doing all the 10 and 40 Hajj. 
See how deep that is deep. Ten, you could spend 20 days in itikaf, Brother Abdul Salam. What Allah is saying here, the, 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 the abid who is bakhil, that worshipper who is a miser and stingy and not caring and loving and kind to people, not generous. Allah loves the other humble person who is generous more than that person. That's deep. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I always tell you that. That's a deep, deep statement. Because a lot of the things today we think because of our prayer. I began the sermon by telling you that and myself, Allah, our prayer, our position, our authority will take us into paradise. And God loves us because of that. No. That loving, kind, humble, beautiful characteristics is what God Almighty loves. We got to learn to understand. I share that with you a few minutes ago. Everything in Islam is connected to being charitable and kind before we celebrate and commemorate anything that is part of it, giving and sharing. So as we conclude the month of Ramadan, I wanted to share this with you myself and myself, brothers and sisters. All the prayer we pray and all the fast we fast, try to be a good human being. Because you need that quality of good insaniyat, good human being quality to add all this piety to that. Be charitable, be kind, be loving. A lot of us don't understand what it is to be charitable and loving and kind. A lot of us, you know, and that's why we sometimes we think we are praying and we're doing this, but yet we're miserable. God not helping us. God not giving us. Nothing is happening. We're too miserable. We don't make other people happy. When we make other people happy, when we are kind and loving to other people, God Almighty will be kind and loving to us. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So I've got to conclude with the verse of the Quran. And those of you who remember it, you remember it. If not, the CDs are free. We've got the whole mechanism with Al Hikmah TV. Immediately as we pray, the CDs will be made. And you can collect these CDs with this hadith for free, no cost at all. MashaAllah. And... You will get this verse. Hear what Allah says in this verse of the Quran, and we'll conclude with this verse. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Surah Ar Rum, Chapter Thirty. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Faati Dal Qurba Hakka. God Almighty is saying, and you must give your kindred their rights. That's a big problem, huh? Eh? A lot of people don't give their children the inheritance that they deserve. And I ain't going to talk about that. That's a whole lecture. We'll do that khutbah some other time, inshallah. You have children, wife and children. Some husbands, their wives, you know, in the American system, you wait to divorce before you give your wife a share in the property. In Islam, you don't have to divorce to share your property with your wife. People don't understand this. Well, in your case, Brother Azar, your wife had to share her property with you. <laughs> These are my friends, so I've got to keep him up a little bit, you know. That's why I keep him awake, anyhow. Um, in, this, in the Western world, people wait for a divorce to share their wealth and property with their wife half and half. In Islam, that's not it. You've got to always have your property already shared. How much for your wife, your children, your next wife? That's a serious thing, you guys laughing? I mean, your sons, your daughters, your parents, your grandchildren. فَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّى Oh my Allah. Fulfilling their rights and giving them as they're supposed to. I ain't talking about that. I'm just telling you the theme. You go study what they need. Don't wait to die for them to fight for it. Because when they fight for it after you die, you don't have loving children anymore. You have a war. You leave a battle and a war with wife and children. Then Allah says, Wal miskina wabna sabil. And fulfill the rights in giving to the poor and the wayfarers, or those which, who who in the path. Ibn Sabil. And I'll go into the details of it. It's straightforward. That's why I said, take the CD after, go home, get it on the Quran, chapter 30, verse 38. Surah Rum, and go study it yourself before we leave here. I don't want you to fool yourself with your salah and your fasting and your charity, and we make it a major blunder when it comes to what we are supposed to do. 
Zalika khairul lalladhina yuriduna wajh Allah Very powerful Allah says you fulfill the rights of the inheritance Of what is due for your children That's what it means Your wife and children, kindred Your brothers, your sisters, blood ties Fulfill the rights of the, the, the needy The poor and the needy This is best for you in the eyes of Allah And you must do this Wajh Allah for the pleasure of Allah. You know, Wajh Allah did it for the face of Allah, not for your face to look good. I just want to show my face to look good in the eyes of people. Allah is saying, no, you do it for to look good in the eyes of Allah. Not in your eyes and your face, but in his face and his eyes. Wajh Allah. Let it look good in the face of God, not in our face. Wa ula'ika humul muflihun. And then Allah says, and those are the people who will be successful. Those are the people who will be prosperous. So sometimes you see we pray in here, etikaf, tarawi, fasting, brother Nizar, and you wonder what's going on. Probably we're not giving our wife and family and children what they do. We're not giving the poor and needy. We're not being that generous, kind person. And that's why we're not prosperous. So want to make a prosperous Ramadan? You want to make a prosperous Eid? You want to have a prosperous holy month? Let's continue it because the purpose of praying and worshiping is to be a good human being and to obey God Almighty. So let's obey his law and do what he has ordered us, inshallah. Ya Allah, ya rahman rahmeen, ya ghafur rahim. Oh Allah, oh Almighty, ya Allah, we thank thee, ya rahman rahmeen, ya dhul jalali wal ikram. Oh most merciful Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, ya Allah. We ask thee Allah to send your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een. We ask thee Allah to save us from problems and difficulties and disasters and calamities, ya Allah, and give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Accept our fast, accept our charity, accept all our good deeds in this holy and blessed month, Ya Allah. Soften our hearts and make us kind and generous people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us closer to you, closer to paradise, closer to the people, closer to your pleasure and your love. And let us do everything for your pleasure, Ya Allah. And give us all again the good in this world, the good in the hereafter, and accept us in Jannah. And paradise without reckoning, inshallah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi l'akhirati hasanata wa kina alda abandar. Inna allahu malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin bi'adadi man sallu wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin bi'adadi man qa'ada wa qam. Wa salli ala jameel anbiya'i wal mursaleen wa ala kulli malaykatika al-muqarrabeen. Wa ala ibadillahi salihin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen. Ibadullah, inna allaha ya'amadu bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahsha wal munkadi wal baghd. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Wa la dhikrullahi. تعالى أعلى وأعلى وعز وجل وحم وأكبر الله أكبر أكبر